Hello everybody, I am again back with my online geography class. The topic that I am going to teach you is connected with the chapter weathering. The name of the topic is denudation. Now before I start my lecture, I have one request to offer to all of you that if you like my video and the presentation, please do subscribe my channel. Now what is meaning of the word denudation? The meaning of the word denudation is to strip off or uncover. Now what to strip off or uncover? It is the earth surface. We define denudation as the process of breaking up and removing the earth surface through erosion and weathering, resulting in reduction or elevation of relief. So, denudation is basically a process by which a part of the earth surface is broken up and it gets removed by the process of erosion and weathering. And as a consequence, what happened? When the weathered materials are removed, then at that particular place, the height of the earth surface get reduced and those weathered materials were deposited in a low-lying area. As a consequence, what happened? The height of that low-lying area get increased. So, denudation led to a a change in landscape and landforms on the earth. So, as denudation is causing alteration in the height on the earth surface, so we can say that it causes change in landscape and landforms on earth. Now, agents of denudation. I will name various agents of denudation like winds, rivers, sea waves, glaciers, etc. Now, according to your ICC syllabus, you have to study about two agents of denudation, that is rivers and winds. How they cause denudation and what are the landforms that are formed due to denudation. At first, I will explain to you about river as an agent of denudation. Now you see, river has its origin from various sources like a lake, a glacier, a mountain or an underground water reserve. These are the places from which a river originated. The journey of a river from its source to its mouth is divided into three main stages. This is the this is the source of a river and this is the mouth of a river. Now we subdivide this total journey of river from its mouth to source into three main part. First one is called upper course. Upper course means when the river is flowing through the mountain. In upper course, the main activity of river is erosion. Then comes middle course. Middle course means the course when river enter the plain. Here the main activity of river is transportation. And the last one is lower course. Means when river is towards the end of its journey. It is near its mouth. Here the main activity is deposition. Now I want to add one point that in middle course beside transportation river also engage in a little bit of deposition but deposition is more in lower course in comparison to the middle course. Now upper course of the river. In the upper course the river is in youthful stage flowing through an uneven surface that means through a mountain or highland leads to intensive bottom erosion because of steep gradient. 
now you have to understand the fact that in the upper course the river is flowing through the mountain for that reason it is flowing with great velocity as it making its way to the steep slope of the mountain for that river is engaged in intensive bottom irrigation or we can say the vertical erosion the vertical erosion of the river channel leads to formation of v shaped valley rapids waterfall steep sided valley and gorges as you can see in the picture that this one is a gorge now how the gorge is created the gorge is mainly created due to intensive vertical or bottom erosion or due to waterfall retreat the shape of gorge is like english alphabet i now this one is rapid rapid is that part of the river course in the mountain where river is flowing with great velocity through a steep slope as you can see over here that river is flowing with great velocity through a steep slope of the mountain this part is called rapid and the rapid is underlain by alternate layer of less resistance rock that is soft rock and more resistance rock that is hard rock next one is waterfall now all of us know very well about waterfall how waterfall is created now waterfall is created in the mountain due to the presence of alternate layers of hard and soft rocks along the course of the rivers as you can see over here there is a layer of soft rock and a layer of hard rock now what happen soft rock get eroded more rapidly to form waterfall this soft rock get eroded rapidly to form waterfall where you can see that water is falling from a height water is falling from a height along a steep wall like structure next one is v shaped valley v shaped valley is also formed due to vertical erosion and v shaped valley is formed when river near its source erodes down vertically so we can we can summarize the fact as v shaped valleys are formed due to vertical erosion caused by the river near its source so why it is called v shaped valley if you look at this diagram you can understand that the valley look like english alphabet v for that it is called v shaped valley this entire part that i am encircling is known as v shaped valley now middle course middle course of the river means that part where river enters the plain as the river enters the plain all of us know that plain are gentle in slope in comparison to mountain for that reason what happened the velocity of river water drastically get reduced as a consequence the erosive power of the river also get reduced now in middle course transportation become important and it leads to the formation of flat plains and the river start meandering because now the velocity of river water get reduced as a consequence if there is any sort of obstruction in the path of the river the river change its direction for that it does not follow a straight path it follow a curved path or meandering path so we can identify following topography in the middle course like you can identify a meanders can identify oxbow lake flat plains and alluvium formation actually 
flat plane is an example of alluvial formation. Yeah, as you can see in this diagram that this extensive green area symbolizes flat plane which is formed due to the deposition of alluvium caused by annual flood. And you can see that river in this middle course is not following a straight path. It is following a curved path. This curved path is called meander. Now, sometime what happened due to erosion and deposition in the middle course, the neck of the meander get separated, result in the formation of oxbow lake. So, how can we define meanders? Or how can we explain the formation of meander? First of all, we can define meander as a curved path of the river in the middle course. And meanders are formed when river in the middle course enters the plain from a high relief and cut through its bank. The neck of the meander gets separated to form the Augsburg Lake. Next one is lower course. In lower course, the slope of the land through which the river is flowing becomes very gentle and the velocity gets very low. The river lost most of its erosive power. That means river hardly can erode in the lower course and flow in a sluggish manner. That means it flow very slowly. River at this stage does little of erosion and transportation. As the river is flowing very slowly, for that it is quite difficult for the river to do any kind of erosion and transportation and is mostly engaging deposition. The stage is characterized by development of distributaries and formation of features like natural levees and delta. As you can see in this diagram that a delta is formed when the sediments are deposited at the junction point of a sea and a river or at the mouth of the river. Now, as the river is depositing a lot in the lower course at its mouth, for that reason, the river get divided into small, small channels. As you can see over here, that it get divided into small, small channels. These channels are known as distributaries. Unlike tributaries, which have its origin in a mountain and it come and meet with the river. A distributary, what does it do? It have its origin from the river. The next agent of denudation is wind. Now, wind actions are more seen in desert and semi-desert region of the world. Why? Because Wind transport particles of minerals, sand, dust, when they are in a dry state and unprotected by vegetation cover. And both this condition that is essential for wind to act as an agent of denudation is available in desert, that is dry condition and very less vegetation cover. The landform like deflation hollow and sand dunes are created by the erosional and depositional action of wind. Now, at first, I will explain to you about deflation hollow. If you look at this picture, you can see that a U shaped depressed area in desert can be seen. Now, this particular depressed area is called deflation hollow. And Adjoining of this depression hall, you can see a water body that symbolizes an oasis. Actually, oasis are also formed 
when deflation hollow become very deep to cut the underground water table now let me explain a bit more when the wind carries sand over a long distance depressions are formed on the surface these depressions are called deflation hollow sometimes these depressions are deep enough to cut the underground water table to form oases now the next one is sand dunes what is sand dunes sand dunes means hill of sand in a desert when in a particular area of the desert sand get deposited by the wind in the form of a hill or small mound it is called sand dunes sand dunes are formed in open deserts when wind take sand from one place and deposits it in another place to form mounds of sands as you can see in this picture that wind have deposited sand in a heap in a pile to form a mountain like structure or hill like structure that is called sand dunes now one more thing sand dunes change their position in the direction of the wind this you can understand if you compare these two diagram you can easily understand that there is a shift in the position of the sand dunes now one special type of sand dune or common type of sand dunes seen all over the world is barkhan now what is the speciality of this particular sand dunes now this particular sand dune that is called barkhan have two projected horns you can see in this picture it has two projected horns and this sand dunes look like a crescent crescent means a uh, shape similar to the moon that we see in the sky at the time of eid that is the festival of muslim so balkhans are very large sand dunes and as i said you that it has long extensive it has long extensive horns projecting out from the two ends now they are produced by the action of wind from one direction if you look at this picture you can see that wind is moving in this particular direction and as a consequence this particular sand dune that is called barkhan is created now barkhan have two face or two side one is called leeward side that is opposite to the direction of the wind which is very steep in slope and another side is called windward side this particular side is gentle in slope so with this i end my video lecture on the topic denudation hopefully you will like it if you have any kind of problem in understanding or if you have any queries related to the topic please don't forget to message me in my whatsapp number that is 62908111 or you can put your valuable comment or queries in the comment box of my youtube channel thank you